Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new series. In this series I'll be teaching you how to make a soccer run game from scratch. Let's get started. So first, what will this project end up being? Well here is the finished project. Go ahead and start it. You can see we have this menu screen. Hit play. See we have our character there running. Use space, jump, jump up, and dodge the soccer balls. It's nice and you have a score counter up there. You can dodge them and if you hit one, you go back to the main menu. So let's go ahead and get right in to making this. So when you first look inside the project, and if you don't want to make all the art yourself, link in the description, you'll see this and you can remix it and follow along. So you'll see you have the player and it has just this, the ground, it just has this, ball, once again just a ball, sprite, then we have the things for the main menu, play button, etc. We have the particles, which just have these things, which make it look a lot nicer than the background. So for now, you can just ignore all of these, don't delete them, we'll need them later, and just focus on these three for today. So we can go ahead and just before we get any further, just hide all of these, because we won't need them for now. And you can keep these three shown. So what you're going to want to do is add A in the player sprite. When green flag clicked, you're going to broadcast and make a new message. Call this one play. And this will just start the game. Next one, just go ahead and add a when I receive play. And now make a variable for this sprite only. Call it I or whatever you want. It doesn't matter what you name it. This will just be used for the cool motion effect. Show that. Set I to zero. Now, grab your forever loop, and we will, so the way this will work, the player isn't gonna move at all. It's gonna look like it's moving because the balls will move. So instead, to make it look like it's running, point in direction, add a plus operator, plus 90, and then a times block, make this like times eight or something, and then go over here, ABS of, change ABS to sine of I. So this will just make him lean back and forth as he runs and just add a change I by 10 to actually increase the value. So if we just run this, you'll see he moves back and forth as if he's running. Great. Now over here in the ball sprite, add a when I receive play block, hide, and then go to, we can just make him go to like, yep, right there is good, just on that side, at the same Y level as the player. So let's see, the Y level of this player is negative 117, so make this negative 117. You can actually make that a bit lower, just so that the bottom of the ball is on the bottom layer of this, so like negative 135. Nice. Now, add a forever loop, wait, Pick random. Once again, the smaller the range, the harder it's going to be. I'll go with like 1.5 to 3 seconds. And now what this is doing is it's just hiding this and then it's waiting. But then here, I'm going to create clone of myself. And then when I start as clone, show, because remember the parent sprite is hidden, show, and then make a variable. Call this one speed. Make it for the spray only. Set speed to pick random. Add a larger negative here, so like negative 13, let's say, to a smaller negative, let's say negative eight. So once again, the wider this range, the harder it will be. Now add a repeat until block, and then add in some or operators. So repeat until, Touching player, which will mean the ball is dead, the player is dead rather, or x position is less than negative 220, and this will mean that the ball is over here, and that in that sense past the player, meaning that it is good to continue. So x position, or at an equals. Now we need a way to detect if the player has died. And to do that, as soon as the player touches the ball, we'll want to tell everyone that, hey, he's dead, stop working. So over back in the player sprite, 
as an if. If touching ball, which is just this, if touching ball, make a variable for all sprites. Call this one dead. Set dead to one and stop other scripts in the sprite and stop the script, which will just stop everything inside of the sprite. And then when I receive play up here, just make sure you set dead to zero, signaling that he's still alive. So that's good. Now back over here, repeat until all this or dead equals one. So once the player dies, if there's another ball out, it'll stop moving. Now, let's actually add the movement. Change X by speed. That's good. Then at the end of all that, delete this clone. Great. Now if we run this, we can see that he'll move and he'll die. But there's an issue. Even once he's dead, the clone, this thing is still running. And it's still making invisible clones that just lag the game a ton. So here, just add an if if dead equals zero. So that just means only make clones if the player is still alive. So now if we run it, you can actually have the balls move to that. But there's another issue. There's nothing that we can do to actually, well, jump. And we need to jump to be able to dodge the balls. So in the player, add A when the key is space pressed. Go ahead and make a variable. Call this y velocity. Make it for this sprite only. When key space pressed, set y velocity to 20. Or the bigger the number, the higher he'll jump. So if you've ever seen a platformer tutorial, this is just like that. When he jumps, he'll go up. Because y velocity is big, he'll go up. Then add a change y block. Change y by y velocity. And then just add a change y velocity by negative two, and that's gravity. So the reason we do all this before the main loop is because otherwise, well, let's go ahead and add this so you can see what I mean. Repeat until, so what's the y position normally? Uh, negative 117. So repeat until y position equals negative 117. So what this will do is he will go up and then he'll move down, down, down until it equals this again. But if we were to just do that from the beginning, right at the start, he would equal this because he hasn't moved yet. So nothing will happen. So we do this at the start here to make it so that he actually moves up first and then he can move back down. So inside of here, you can just duplicate that, put it over, do that, and that's good. Then at the end of all of this, just set y velocity to zero. And now we only want the player to be able to jump when he's still alive. So add an if dead equals zero to all of that. Great. So now that's working. Make sure your ground is showing. So it actually looks like it's moving. You can move this up so that it's just where the player is so that it actually looks nice. Run it. He'll be moving like that. Balls will come, go up. There's another small minor issue. The balls don't look like they're actually moving. They just look like they're gliding across because they are. Make that look better, what we can do is right here, since they're moving right to left, just add a turn left like two degrees. So now when we run it, the balls are actually like rotating, which makes it look a bit more believable. What will make it look more believable, however, is if the ground actually like lines up with the balls. So to do that, just stop it, show the ball, and then line everything up so that it's actually like looks slightly believable. So you can do like that. The ball having like a bit about that much is good. You'll just want the ground to go to back layer so that it doesn't mess up the background when we add that next time. So when I receive play, go to back layer. So now we run this. See, when it's moving like that, run, it goes across. Nice. So there's that. So in the next video, I will show you how to add particle effects to make it look a lot nicer.
Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.